Hello friends, it's Mal with Made by Manny and Mal. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited you are here and I hope you are all having a wonderful day or night, whatever it is where you are. In today's video, we're going to be making a little back to school tumbler. I know I'm totally late to the game with back to school. I don't have kids, so I don't know the schedule, but I wanted to make a really cute back to school tumbler. So if you want to use this as a Christmas gift idea or a little late back to school gift for your kids teachers. I think it would be really, really cute. So we're going to do a half pencil and then a half cute little watercolor art split on the other side. Before we get into the video though, I do have some really, really exciting news that I want to share with all of you. Starting September 1st, I'm going to be launching my brand new Patreon membership made by Manny and Mal Elite. So we're going to have a lot of benefits. I really, really want this to be a valuable tool and experience for all of you. So we're going to have things like an exclusive Facebook group with live tutorials, giveaways, of course, special discounts, and just a really, really great community. I will have a lot of activities planned and I am really, really excited to be able to get to know all of you better and offer you an even better experience with a small, tight-knit community. So I'm going to have all of the information listed down in the description box, the full list of benefits, pricing information, launch date, all of that stuff. I am going to limit it to 500 members. I wanna keep it really, really close-knit, small, make sure that I can have a personal connection with all of you and that if you need anything, I am available for you. So all of that will be in the description, like I said, launching September 1st. So if you have any questions about membership benefits, any suggestions, anything you'd like to see, go ahead and leave a comment down below or send me a message on Facebook or Instagram and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, I think that's all. As well as all the Patreon info, all of the products I use in this video will also be linked down below. So be sure to check that out as well. Okay, for real, that's enough, let's go. We're using a 20 ounce skinny straight from Makerflow. I've sanded it down, washed it, and now we're going to start on our split. We're going to do the pencil side of the split first, and I'm using a template that I got from LB Creates. I will have her website linked in the description box below, and I just bought the template size for the 20 ounce skinny straight from Makerflow. So I cut out the full template, and then I just cut it in half with my paper trimmer. You can probably figure out a way to just cut half of it, but I made multiples of these, so I just used the other half for another tumbler. This template does hang over the top and bottom rim just the slightest bit, but it won't end up mattering in the long run because we're going to glitter all of these sections, of course. So I'm going to apply this template just the same way that I would a full vinyl wrap. I'm going to start by trimming off that excess backing and then use that excess transfer tape that's hanging off this side to help me anchor down my template to my cup, which will make applying it a whole lot easier. So we're basically going to apply this template using the hinge method, which is why we leave that excess transfer tape open. And I'm just going to reinforce that hinge or anchor with a piece of blue painter's tape. Then I'm gonna get my template lined up on my cup, make sure it's straight. I'm trying to get all of that excess stencil vinyl up over the top rim of the cup, but it really won't matter, like I said. I just want more of the pencil lead to show. I don't wanna to lose too much of that in the overhang. And I'm just going to smooth this onto my cup, make sure that everything lines up straight, that it's not going wonky when I wrap it around, and that it is where I want it. So then, because we have that hinge laid down on our cup, I can just flip this stencil over, make sure that the backing is going to come off easily, and then adhere the vinyl to my cup. So this is exactly what I do with a full vinyl wrap or anything you know big that I'm going to put on my cup. I'm going to smooth the vinyl down onto my cup with my thumbs and push the backing away in the process. So my backing got cut because I had my cut setting too high on my silhouette. So that's why it's in two separate pieces. But if you cut on the right setting, you won't have to worry about that. I want to make sure that this is really adhered to my cup before I try to pull my transfer tape off. So I'm just going to push it down rub it on there, make sure it's stuck, and then I'll remove that blue painter's tape first, grab my transfer tape as well, and very carefully and slowly pull back the transfer tape just in case a piece of my stencil lifts just like it did here. I want to make sure that it is on my cup and that I'm not going to ruin anything by pulling my transfer tape away too quickly. <music> 
So despite all of the measuring and planning and all of that that I did, my stencil is not perfectly straight. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit slanted. So what I'm going to do is just take a piece of blue painter's tape and line it up with the straight edge, which is different on each side. So on this side of the cup, it's at the bottom, and I'm just going to make sure that tape line is straight. So as you can see, it's right up against the edge at the bottom, and then it leaves a little bit of stainless steel up at the top. And I'm going to repeat that same process on the other side, and you'll see that the little sliver of stainless steel is at the bottom of the cup because we're creating two straight lines here basically. So it's going to be the inverse on the other half. All right, so now that we're all taped off, we're ready to actually start our glittering. I'm going to do this wooden part of the pencil first along with the top eraser portion. So I'm just going to peel off those little pieces of stencils and then we'll mix our adhesives and our paint. For the eraser part of our pencil, we're going to use Grace from PDB. It's the perfect like soft pink eraser color. And then for the wooden part of our pencil, we're going to use Maple also from PDB. It's like a darker brown, but it looks really rich and nice. Then I'm going to take in two separate little cups. I'm going to take some soft pink acrylic paint and put that into one cup. And then I'm taking raw sienna from this Arteza acrylic paint pack. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in the other cup. And then I'm going to use my designer dries clear adhesive. I got this on Amazon and I'm just going to pour a little bit of that into each of these cups as well. And starting with the eraser portion, I'm using this big flat brush. I got this in a pack, I think at Walmart. And I'm just going to evenly brush this paint and adhesive mixture onto my cup using the stencil to really help me stay in the lines here. <laughs> and you wanna make sure that you don't have too thick of a coat of this, but you also wanna make sure that you have enough on there that it's even and you're not gonna see any brush strokes or anything through your glitter. So I went over this a couple times and just made sure that I didn't have any globs of paint or anything anywhere, but that we had a really good solid base. And then I went right in with my glitter. I just glittered the entire thing, patted it down just to make sure that we had the entire space covered, and then we were good to go. I only did one coat of glitter for this entire pencil. If you are using Mod Podge or something else and you feel like you need to do two coats, go for it. Absolutely make sure you get the best coverage that you can. I'm going to remove the adjacent stencil piece immediately after glittering because I don't want the adhesive and everything to dry and then go back in and try to peel that stencil up and risk pulling some of the paint up. We prepped our cup really well so that shouldn't happen but always better safe than sorry. I'm repeating the exact same process down at the bottom for the wood portion. I'm just making sure that I have a really good solid base coat of this adhesive and paint mixture and then I'll go in with maple and fully coat that section with that glitter. just like I did at the top, I'm going to remove that bottom stencil portion where the lead for the pencil will go. And then I'm also going to trim down the middle pencil part. I'm just going to cut off half of that middle stencil just so we know where the pencil goes still. We don't want to remove the entire thing. Um, we want to keep the integrity of the top part of the stencil for the silver portion. But I wanted to peel up these little pointy edges of the stencil to make sure we don't have any issues later. So I just cut the stencil in half and then I pulled back those little pointy edges and then I set this aside and let it dry about 30 minutes before I went in with my next set of pencil portions. The next sections we're going to cover are the lead portion and the silver portion. So for the bottom, I'm using Midnight from PDB and then for the silver up top, we're going to use Brilliant also from PDB. And our little adhesive cups are still a little bit wet, so we can reuse them. So I'm taking that same brown cup that I used and I'm just adding some black acrylic paint to it. This is going to darken up the base and that's really all we need. We don't need an exact color match. We just want the base to help fill in any gaps that might occur. So I'm doing the exact same thing with the pink. I'm taking this gray paint from Arteza, that same pack, and I'm gonna mix that into the pink just to give us a more silver base and so we're not wasting any adhesive or anything. I'm taking that same flat brush on the bottom and then after I did it, I realized it was a little too big. So then I went in with a smaller brush and made sure I had really good coverage with that paint before I went in with my glitter.
we're going to use that same paintbrush up at the top and just be really careful you don't want to get any of this paint into your glitter that you already have down because when you go into glitter it some of that glitter will stick so just be careful when you're painting these portions that are up against something you've already done I'm going to remove that remaining portion of stencil that we've got on our cup and then I'm going to also trim off the painters tape that's up against the sections we've already glittered just using my craft knife I'm just gonna cut a straight line and peel back that tape because we don't want the same thing to happen that I was worried about with the stencil we don't want to pull up any of that glitter once it's already dried so I'm gonna trim it and then we should have a piece of blue painters tape for that middle section to make sure that our yellow paint lines stay straight as well so I'm going to let this sit aside another 30 minutes and then once it's dry, we will move on to the final section of our pencil, which is the yellow. So for the yellow, I'm using Capella from PDB and then light yellow paint from that same Arteza paint pack. And I'm starting a new adhesive cup here. I don't want to contaminate anything, of course. We want a really good pure yellow. So I just took a little bit more of that adhesive, mixed it all together, and then I'm going back to my big brush because this is a big piece of space we need to cover. And I'm just going to evenly coat this the best I can, make sure that I'm not getting any yellow paint on any of the spots I've already glittered, and then we will go in with our yellow glitter to cover this up. Once it's glittered, I'm going to pull back that remaining piece of blue painter's tape, and then I'm gonna let this sit and dry overnight before I do anything to it. Once it's dry, I'm going to hit it with two coats of Rust-Oleum Clear Gloss Spray, waiting about 30-ish minutes in between each coat. And once those glitters are all sealed, once our pencil is good to go, I'm going to take some more blue painter's tape and tape off that pencil so that we can paint the other side of our cup. Okay, full disclosure, I wish I would have spray painted this side and then applied the glitter using the epoxy method. I used this gloss acrylic craft paint, mixed it in with my adhesive, and I don't know if it's the finish of the paint or the brand of the paint, I don't know. It just was kind of streaky and you could see it underneath the glitter and I just, looking back at the cup now, I wish I would have just spray painted the base and applied the glitter with the epoxy method, it would have been a whole lot better. So anyway, I didn't do that. So we're going to brush on this paint and adhesive and glitter it. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. But if you're gonna do this, I would recommend spray painting <laughs> or doing two coats of paint. If you only have acrylic paint and you wanna go this route, I would use either a better brand of paint or do two or three coats of paint before you go in with your paint and adhesive mixture. Hindsight is 2020. For the glitter on this white side, I'm using Frost from PDB, and I'm just going to coat this entire side with this glitter. I definitely should have done two coats. Like I said, this whole paint situation and side was not the biz, but whatever. It ended up turning out just fine, so all good here. I'm going to immediately remove my tape, and then I'm going to set this aside, let everything dry completely, and then I will spray seal it one more time with just one coat of Rust-Oleum Clear Gloss Spray. We are finally ready for epoxy. So for this first coat of epoxy, I'm taking 20-ish milliliters of a little extra ink, and I'm just going to seal my cup with this. I'm gonna do the white section first and then go in and seal the pencil section. I let this coat dry about six-ish hours, and then I went back in with a second coat. This time I'm still using ALE epoxy, but I'm using 30 milliliters and I'm going to add a little bit of bright from Peachy Olive Glitters into my epoxy. This is going to give the cup kind of an overall cohesive sparkle. It's going to add some sparkle to our black lead section of our pencil, and it's also going to add some more sparkle and depth to the white section. I let this coat cure a full 12 hours, and then I went in and I did all of the sanding on my top and bottom rim, but I didn't do any sanding on like the body of the cup. Because we're going to be using clear printable vinyl, we want a glossy surface for that, just like we do with a water slide. So I made sure that I didn't do any sanding like on the main part of the cup. If your cup is not totally smooth after your two coats, do some sanding and then go back in with a thin coat to just reshine up the surface. Before we go into our clear printable vinyl decals, we're going to do all of the striping for our pencil. So I'm gonna start by adding the stripes on the sides of the cup in between the halves. And for these, I'm using a holographic Cricut vinyl. I know I don't usually like Cricut stuff, but 
I really, really like this vinyl. <laughs> I cut these stripes at 11.5 by 0 0.20 inches high. And we're going to use the exact same vinyl for the outlining on the top silver eraser part. But these I cut at half the size. So they're 11.5 inches long still, but they're 0 0.10 inches wide. And I'm applying these straight and cutting off the excess using our side striping lines as a guide to help me cut off the excess. So those two lines should meet up perfectly. We shouldn't have any overlapping or anything in those sections. And that's why I lay down my side striping first so that when I have to cut off the excess of all these other stripes, I can use that as a guide and help make sure that everything is lined up properly and we don't have any overlap or bumping or anything like that. All of the stripes from here on out are the same size. They're all that 0.1 inches wide. So just remember that you will cut them all to different lengths, but just remember 0.1 inches wide for all of your pencil stripes. After I added my stripe down for the lead, I added the two stripes for the middle of the pencil, and I'm just attaching those to the pointy parts of our wood and then cutting off the excess at the top. Just make sure that these lines are straight because if they're wonky, your whole cup is gonna look wonky. For the brown section, I'm using thin brown vinyl. I was going to use gold to kind of brighten it up a little bit, but it kind of clashed with the golden yellow part of the pencil and the lines are just too thick and I liked these better. So I'm using these thin, just regular brown or Cal 651 stripes. And I'm going to put these on kind of the same way that you would if you were adding the lines for a tangram or a cup like that. So I'm going to put the stripes down, let them overlap, and then cut off the excess so that it creates a point at the bottom. If you wanted to just make the ends meet up and you can do a perfect point that way, that will probably use less vinyl, but this is the easiest way for me to get a really good solid point exactly where I want it. Now that all of our stripes are placed on our pencil, we can turn the cup over and add all of the cute little watercolor decals that we've got for this side. So these are from Alicia Ray Art. I bought these on Etsy. She has a ton of these. She's got them for nurses, all different kinds of professions, and she does really great work. So I will have her website and her Etsy shop linked in the description box below. And we are using, like I said, clear printable vinyl. This is my first time using this and Oh my gosh, I'm a convert. This was so much easier than using water slide. I made another one of these that I will show you at the end and I used clear water slide for that and it worked great. So if you're more comfortable with water slide, either one will work. Um, this was really easy though. I didn't have to seal anything. I just cut out as closely as I could to the design and stuck them on just like a regular sticker. I didn't use transfer tape or anything and they were really great so i am definitely a fan of these so basically i just took the quote and put that in the middle of the cup and then i cut out all of these cute little school symbols and placed them around that quote and anything that overlapped i just used that side striping as a guide and cut off the excess so that everything was clean and crisp so just going to put these wherever i think they will go these are really cohesive and they all go together. So I ended up taking two separate packs um, of the school kind and mixing them together just to make sure that the space was filled and that it looked clean and good. I'm going to go right into another coat of epoxy. I'm not going to seal our decals or anything. We should be pretty good with lifting. This printable vinyl doesn't run or bleed or anything. So we were all good. I went right in with a coat of about 15 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy. I let this coat cure about six hours before I finished up the bottom and then added my very, very last coat of epoxy. And then this cup is all done. I am really, really happy with how these cups turned out. I think they're such a cute idea for a teacher's gift. And I just, I think they're so cute. If I was a teacher, I would love to get one of these as a gift. So the one I'm holding right now in my hand is the one that we worked on together in this tutorial with the clear printable vinyl. And then this one is the one that I made beforehand. This is with the clear water slide and the white spray painted base. I also used a couple different glitter colors in the one on the left, but you can just see the difference in the colors and the vibrance. So I would definitely recommend 
the different white base. I think that makes all the difference, but other than that, I think these are totally cute and a great gift idea for teachers. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget all of the information for my new Patreon membership launching September 1st is down in the description box. If you have any questions or if there's anything you want to see or get out of that membership, be sure to let me know because I am here to help you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.